All right, so today we're going to talk about the 0-1 knapsack problem. But first, what is a knapsack? Uh, so there's been lots of terms over the years, but I think the one that most of us are used to at this point is book bag, right? Something you can use to carry items on your back without the use of your hands. Um, you might think that this is a knapsack, as I did at first, but apparently that is called a bindle. So now that we know what a knapsack is, right? And given some constraints to it, such as the weight that it can hold, or perhaps the dimensions, um, and then given some items that we would put in the knapsack, the natural problem arises, which of these items should we put into the knapsack? Um, should we put this item here? I mean, it looks very tempting, high value item, or should we put some other subset of items in there to maximize our value? And it's not very clear which of those we should take, right? Uh, so we have a problem on our hands. And actually, we have a combinatorial problem on our hands because uh, it's not clear which combination is, is right. You know, naive solution to this is we would just try all the different subsets until we find the one that has the maximum value. But we know as good computer scientists that that's probably going to be a very slow algorithm, right? So it turns out that knapsack problems are very common in the wild, and therefore... Uh, that is the reason why we're interested in solving them. Um, anything from resource allocation, decision making, optimality, um, selection, uh, minimizing loss, that kind of stuff. Um, all of those are versions of a knapsack problem. And it turns out there's actually multiple types of knapsack problems as well. So I, I mentioned earlier we were talking about the 0-1 knapsack problem today, but you have versions that are bounded or unbounded um, numbers of items, you know, perhaps you can have an infinite number of a particular item. Uh, fractional items, so you could think of like powdered gold or liquid platinum or something like that. Um, you can have multiple constraints, multiple knapsacks, etc. There's also uh, a lot of problems out there that are very similar to the knapsack problem, or perhaps they're called something different, or they can be related to the, the knapsack problem. So, like I said, this, it's just a very common problem. All right, so if we were to take a brute force, naive, exhaustive search uh, solution to this and just try every combination, if we take n items, a power set is 2 to the n subsets, right? So the, the more items we have, the number of subsets is growing exponentially, and therefore we're going to have you know, exponential growth in our instructions, and it's going to be a very slow algorithm. Um, but if we actually break down one of these problem instances, say these items and this knapsack here, uh, we're looking at all the, uh, the the subsets of items that you could put in there. Looks like um, item three and item four are the most valuable uh, that we get for this constraint. Uh, but look at this. This is pretty interesting. If you look at like item one and three, obviously we can't even put those into the knapsack because their weight exceeds the knapsack. So why would we ever be interested in one, three, and four, right? Uh, that's a clear example that you don't need to look at every subset of this problem. If you had some kind of recursive solution, you could do some backtracking or forward checking or something like that. If we are going to do a recursive solution, obviously we need a recurrence relation first, right? Uh, and so it comes down to, well, let's think about a particular item. Obviously, we're going to look at n items. So looking at the nth item, we could start at the end of the list, right? Looking at the nth item, what are we going to do with it? Either we're going to exclude it, so not include the nth item, and just move on to the n minus 1 items, right? Hoping we get a better value later, right? Or we do include it at that time, we subtract the weight uh, or whatever our constraint is um, from our knapsack, and we include it and get the value immediately. So our recurrence relation here um, looks like this. Uh, for knapsack NW, if the weight is already bigger than what's left over in the knapsack, uh, then we don't even include it at all. We just move on to n minus 1 items, or the remainder of the items. Otherwise, right, if we can fit this item in our knapsack, well, really, we're taking the max of two choices here, which are the two choices we showed up here. right? Either we don't take the item, or we do take the item, and we de decrease the weight um, appropriately. OK, and here is our recursive solution. You can implement that if you want. Um, but we're going to look at a problem instance here. Uh, we have three items. Uh, I know it shows a zero item here, but that's just to stop our recursion because we're using n as the, both the number of items and an indexer into this recursive uh, solution. So we have our three items here, item one, two, and three. We have a knapsack weight of two. Um, and we're just going to step through. What's the best we can do? Now, we know there's a, a knapsack weight of two, and all of these items have a weight of one. So we know, 
obviously we're going to have to choose two of these and it looks like you know they're different values this would be the best solution um, so it would be uh, the max value you could get is fifty dollars but we're going to step through this anyway so that we can show it right let's show a recursive tree here so we start with knapsack three items with a weight of two and then we're presented with our choice here right the max of either not taking this item or the max of taking this item right uh, and we break that down appropriately. So if we didn't take this item, well, we're considering the next two, right? If we didn't take this item, well, we're considering this one here, this last one here. This is going to break down. Once we get down to an item of zero, this um, like sentinel value here, you can see we're just returning um, values of zero there, right? So that choice would be, well, you know, what's better, zero or adding the value of taking this plus zero, right? So that's going to be 10. Uh, if we did take this item, we would have a value of 10, right? Uh, we break down this other side, and it's a very similar thing, right? It doesn't really get interesting in here until item two. When we're looking at item two, you know, we're looking at this max here. Well, you know, what's better? Either we don't take item two, and we're just left with what was in the knapsack before us, so that's 10. Or we do take item two, we add the value of item two to what's in the knapsack already. So that's 20 plus 10, that's going to be 30. Right? And we can actually do that with the, the weight constraints and how much weight is in here. Right, uh, So we'd be left with 30. So if we never took 3 to begin with, the best we could do is 30, which totally makes sense, Right, looking at this problem instance. Uh, we continue to break this down, and we can see that we do end up getting the, the value of 50. You know, this does work, but the problem with this is, like we talked about in our dynamic programming video, are these uh, overlapping sub-problems, right? Uh, we've already solved this here, so over here, or over here, so we don't need to solve that again. Uh, we've already solved this over here, so we don't need to solve that again, right? So when we have a very large recursive tree, obviously it's not efficient because of these overlapping sub-problems. Now one way you can get around this is doing something called memoization, where you can have still have this large recursive um, solution, but every time you're going to recurse, you check a table. Um, if the value is not in the table, you recurse, and as you get the values back, you plug them into a table. Um, and that way you prevent recursing when there is a value already in the table. And that can be very useful. But we're going to look at a dynamic programming solution. So first you need to watch our video on dynamic programming so you have an understanding of what we're doing there. Um, but let's look at the DP solution to the knapsack problem. We're going to use the following definition. So n is our items just like we did before. But if we just look at an arbitrary element here, like element i, and we say, okay, for knapsack element i and a remaining weight of j, well, that's a choice between these two here, right? Either we don't take element i and we just consider what the knapsack value is with the i minus 1 um, elements remaining with the same amount of weight left over because we didn't take this item. Or we do take this item, so we have to subtract i's weight, right, w sub i, i's weight from j, so we have to jump over into the table um, some amount of weight here, and we're, we're comparing what is the greatest knapsack value there um, with those remaining items. Um, so for this value, we'll, we'd end up adding i's value plus whatever this was. So basically, we're looking at, you know, what is the max between these two choices, and if we do choose the item, we end up adding its value there, all right? So I'm going to keep our recurrence here and our problem instance is going to be this table here we have four items right with the following weights and values and our knapsack is going to be um, a, of a weight of five all right we're going to have a table here um, the table is just this darker area these are just the indices for um, i and for j uh, basically for n and for w right so if i had no items in there it doesn't matter what the weight is it's all zero 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 this is all zeroed out but it's going to help our calculations here all right so recall from dynamic programming we're doing a bottom up solution here kind of the opposite of recursion so we're building up our table here because we want an optimal solution that comes from optimal sub solutions Right. And the first sub-solution that we can consider here, other than our zeroed out ones, is looking at item 1. Right? We're looking at item 1 with a knapsack of weight 1. Right? And let's look at our recurrence here. What should we do? Well, um, if j minus the weight of item i is less than 0, well, let's look at that. Uh, this is item 1. It has a weight of 2. So if we had a knapsack of weight 1 and we try to put an item of weight 2 in it, obviously we can't do that. Right? Um, this is going to be less than zero. It's going to be off the chart. So we need to just look at 
um, what is the value in the knapsack with one previous item in the same J? Well, one previous item is nothing. There's no item, so that's why we have this padded area here. So basically, we're saying um, it's zero, right? This is we cannot even do that, right? Um, so we fill in a zero there. Let's look at the next one, right? Um, so still item um, one here, but we now have a knapsack of weight two. We are going to be able to fill that, right? So this isn't going to be less than zero. So now we're left with this choice here. Well, do we take um, this value here? Like if we did not take this item, what's the best we did before, which was nothing? Or do we take um, knapsack I minus one, J minus W sub I. So J is two minus W sub I is two. We jump back here in the table, right? So this value plus the value of taking item one, right? Which is going to give us 12. That's the value of it, right? So you can see that was our choice there. Obviously, in this scenario, it's better to take um, item one if you had this scenario here, right? Uh, so we move on. It's similar for uh, the remainder uh, amount of weights with just this one item. We can't get any larger there, right? Um, so things only start getting interesting when we start introducing new items here, right? Um, what's better here for item two? Well, item two, immediately, if we had a weight of one for the knapsack, we can we can take that immediately, right? Because we're comparing this and this, which is better, right? Uh, obviously, this plus the value of taking the item, right? Uh, but as you move along, right, you're going to be building up different combinations here. In the bottom element here, you're going to be left with the most optimal value uh, for n items and a weight of w. Right? We're going to step through that, step through that. Uh, finally, we get to the end here, and we're saying, okay, for taking all these four items and a knapsack weight of w, well, what's better here? Either a value of 32 previously or a value of 22 plus taking the value of 4, right? Um, item 4, and we're left with 37 there. So we're saying 37 is the best we can do here with n items and a knapsack weight of w, right? And, and that's not immediately clear when we look at this table. Um, and obviously, you want some proof, um, some verification yourself, right? You want to print out which items that you chose. Um, so we talked about with dynamic programming, usually you, you keep a, another table around to kind of keep track of that. But in some of these um, solutions where you're using this big 2D table here, you can actually do some backtracking in your own table. So if you think about it, when we were, you know, when we were looking at this last combination here, um, when we were looking at item four for weight of W, um, if we had chosen item four, right, then this value in the table would be different than this value, correct? Uh, because we're adding this value plus, you know, some other value in the table, um, you know, and subtracting the weight at the same time, right? So if this value is not the same as this value, we know we chose this item. So in this case, we know we chose item four, right? Um, and if we chose item four, well, we can just subtract item four's weight from the nat sack, which is, which is two. We jump back to, you know, a weight of three now, um, and we're at this particular element. Now, at this point, we're like, okay, did we choose this item or not? And you could see immediately here that we did not choose the item. We chose to stick with the, the value of the items that were there already, right? So we didn't choose item three, right? We did choose item two, and we did choose item one, right? So we were able to backtrack there to figure out which items that we chose. And if you look at these, well, that's a two, four, five, weight of five, right? And this value um, that you get here is um, the maximum value you can do. You know, this item looks very tempting, right? But it has a weight of three, so it's very restrictive as well, right? And there you have it. Now we have a uh, dynamic programming solution to this problem, uh, which is obviously much faster than a brute source or a recursive um, solution. I mean, obviously, it's still an NP problem, but this is considered one of the easier NP problems to solve. Um, it is not solving it in polynomial time, although it looks like that because it looks like it's it's just n and w. This is a problem that is in what's called uh, pseudo polynomial time. All right, you'll have to Google about pseudo polynomial, and it has to do with the the length of the actual storage size that you're using to solve this particular problem. It, that is still growing at an exponential rate, and so it's not quite a polynomial solution.